So we see the NAACP is active elsewhere, really doing something and threatening lawsuits. Not here. Why not? As I said, I've been highly upset at the LCB, but as it stands today, I'm not going to let my anger get in the way of, of, of moving forward. And so as I see, the LCB definitely has made changes. Uh, and they're trying to right you a little bit extra time, but you do have 30 seconds left. See, look, they give extra time. You. See that? If the LCB see that? is truly trying to do the right thing. I'm writing a letter tonight. If not, then I'll have to back away. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. He, he, he also... Hey, uh, Mike, Mike Asai also said that uh, Mr. Uh, Rick Garza made a public apology to him back in 2020 at, at, a, at, a, at a public meeting. Um, with that apology, did he give him his license back? Yeah, or did, I, he, did he compensate him for any lost wages? Yes, yes. We missed you at the meeting yesterday. Oh, sorry about that. You know, I was, I was out. I tried to uh, make people sign for this petition. That's the, that's understandable, man. It's it was uh God, now now we have nine we have we have ninety two we have eight left. Excellent work, man. I got a couple last weekend too. It's hard. People don't want to actually pull the lever. Hello, miss. <laughs> View on you. Why don't you tell us what you were going through uh, during that meeting and you know a quick bit about your background, just in case somebody hasn't doesn't know it, and then tell us a story about what happened this week. Okay, a little bit about my background. I'm the uh, founder of Life Tree Collective uh, in 2011 from 2016 when we were forced out of uh, business by the Liquor Cannabis Boards, threatening letters, uh, saying that they were going to come in and if we didn't leave, they were going to sick the feds and get the feds involved and they scared us away, basically. So mm -hmm. uh, fast forward that from 16 to, uh, you know, to about 2019, uh, some community leaders that were working closely with Ollie Garrett um and my father-in-law's uh cousin and my father-in-law um they were they were going to uh you know get us involved in the social equities and promised us a license but we had to give up some equity to them to their family members uh and keep that on the hush hush uh and i guess that's what social equity what, is what, to them what, what um, as you were asking I, I can't hear you what was the percentage they were asking uh almost half 49 percent Mm-hmm. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so that's a little bit of our background. Uh, we had a lawyer uh, who was helping us with the social equity program after, um, you know, we were told that Nate Miles and Ollie said too many hands in the, Ollie Garrett uh, of the LCB, there was too many hands in the pot and they were just going to go elsewhere and they scrapped the whole program. And, uh, you know, um, that wasn't in my doing. You know, my father-in-law, I guess, was trying to negotiate a deal behind my back. And, uh, you know, there you have it. So I'm kind of caught in the middle. But um, mm -hmm. as far as, uh, yesterday, yeah, <laughs> as, as far as yesterday's uh, meeting uh, was concerned with the LCB, I was flabbergasted. Uh -huh. I, I, I was like totally thrown an uppercut, man, a gut punch, man. Uh -huh. uh, also, Mike Asai, not to have anything against him, you know, basically jumped on and, and made it seem like if we don't beg and plead and, and wave, uh, you know, a white flag, you know, and to, and, and just, uh, you know, pipe down that we uh, were probably not going to get anything out of it. His his words were basically something similar to this. And it's, it, the video is, is already, you know, available for public viewing. Oh, uh, yeah, he yeah. basically said. He basically said that uh, I'm I'm not going to be argumentative with the LCB and ruin my chances. If it was your chance, you being argumentative, you know, wouldn't stop you from getting it if it was your chance. And then he said that, uh, and not that I have nothing against the brother, you know, we're in the same fight. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it seems like some some people, I don't know who it is, but it seems like somebody wants us to all divide it. Um, but, you know, he basically you know, said that we must, you know, he's not going to, he's not going to argue with them and ruin his chances of getting a yeah, license. And, and in his rhetoric, this, he said, this is the thing I keep coming back to in his rhetoric in, in, in no one's rhetoric, 
Will they discuss the fact? I, I keep I'm gonna hammer on this every time I talk about it because Oscars too is the exact same issue. If you take a license confers a, a bundle of rights, privileges, protections, and immunities, the you know the, the wrongful deprivation of which results in harm, compensable harm. And they these lawyers, they hate yeah. me so much for being so investigative and for having the, the knowledge I have. Everybody just hates me. And I'm like, you got, you're pointing at me, you got three coming back at you guys, man. I'm just telling you, that's the law. And that's the law for Oscar. And Oscar got recompensed when they took his license without just cause. So why shouldn't you? God, that's equity. Good God. Mike said it with his own, his own, you know, mouth that he's out of millions of dollars of, uh, you know, uh, generational wealth, as, as I am too. My yeah. brother, too. Sammy is, too. You know, right. we're out of some generations of wealth. But Mr. Garza is sorry, and the cannabis board is sorry. Mm -hmm. um, but did they compensate you? Right. Like Oscar? Yeah. How about that? And so like why, Oscar. Why are we the villains for asking about this when that was it's full circle now? Because when the whole thing started with this social equity, reparations were on the table, allegedly. And now it, Look, that's I'm willing to give the LCB a second chance. I'm not going to hold grudges of uh, the LCB. From what I've seen, has been great during the task force meeting. OK, look, folks, uh, some people try to accuse other people of being angry or something like that. But whatever. Look, Mike aside, I'm going to talk to you directly and personally. OK, I need you to hear me, brother. And everybody else in your situation, y'all go ahead and get your licenses. Yes, by all means, go get your licenses. You know, they're overdue, right? Lord God, help that boy. And I hope you don't have to pay 49% to people that are not truly of your choice, right? Anyway, we will never have true equity until the original blacks in cannabis get the same treatment and help from people like the ACLU that Oscar's restaurant received, i.e. news coverage, lawyers, briefing, and $500,000 of lost wages. Or even that the Washington driver's license folks received when the ACLU and Miller and Nash helped them out uh, you know, to, to hold on to a license that is also necessary for their economic freedoms. OK, so until that day is reached and until the NAACP gets up off their legal fund and actually starts suing to get that kind of money back that you're owed as the original black cannabis professionals. Until that moment comes. I will leave you with the words of my co-writer and me when we rejected someone a couple months ago on our project. You're just putting sugar on shit. Yeah, Gene, it's just really crazy the the uh, the way that they did cannabis out here. You know, it was really like a it was just to get money. It was never like an altruistic thing with them uh, because of the mortgage crisis, which you're my, the first person who started mortgage movies with me because of the mortgage crisis, you know, uh, and WAMU being centered right here, a major cash cow. Right. Uh, because of that, uh, it hit the region doubly hard and then they sold off all the uh alcohol, the liquor stores, you know, so all the li our liquor style got sold off, you know what I'm saying? So after that happened, they needed money, they needed like, you know, an influx of money. And so up comes cannabis, you know, and that was the whole, and they got rid of medical because medical wasn't being taxed. So all this thing is a huge cash cow behind it. And now, you know, oh, it comes back. And now, you know, also that uh, Pfizer is involved with $7 billion worth of, of funds that their stock doubled during COVID, of course. You know, they use that money from COVID to, to turn around and then dominate our market. And they're going to, oh my God, dude, it's, that, it's just such a juggernaut. It's 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 foul. Like I say, this is from the 90s, guys. Uh, panel says Gahanna violated the Fair Housing Act. You know, I got housing for frail, elderly, handicapped people. I've worked with uh, city councilors. This guy, Fred T. Boom, we... Uh, I basically changed law. I, I filed a lawsuit against the city school board. I was about to file it. This guy was financing it in half. We met halfway. And then they uh, it accidentally got leaked. I, I, so they, they saw it and they changed their policy at the next board. They called it the emergency board meeting and changed their policy because of this. And this is where the city attorney agreed with the pair, agreed with us, okay? Because okay. we were right. Then, this is where uh, Gerald Hankerson wrote the letter from NAACP. It's so strident and it's in its uh, uh, tone.
so yet, yet, yet the uh, legal fund won't do anything for him and they won't even answer his request for help. This is September 13 of 2021. Uh, you know, now, now the cannabis is legal in Washington state for the state to enact strategic policies that further restricts our community from equal economic opportunities is egregious and underscores the, the systemic racial inequalities that continue to exist in many of our statewide economic policies. Therefore, we're calling on Governor Inslee, state legislature, and all state agencies to develop and to implement anti-racist policies to allow equal economic opportunities for African Americans and communities of color. Meanwhile, the NAACP will remain diligent and disrupt all statewide efforts that continue to disenfranchise our community from the economic benefits of the cannabis industry. We can no longer wait, nor anticipate true equity for restrictive cannabis policies built on institutional racism and white supremacy laws. We are done begging for what we have earned and deserve. Boy, that sounds kind of angry, huh? Well, you know, uh, all I said yesterday was I, I talked about a number of situations that didn't make sense in terms of why uh, white folks are getting help and black folks aren't. You know, we discussed the situation with the bar, with uh, Oscars too, where the ACLU helped them and helped driver's license people get their licenses back or, you know, just did a you know, number of things to help them. And then meanwhile, you know, we got nothing. Uh, and we're staying out here and they don't even respond to Kevin's uh, request for help. So it's it, that's not equal. So he kind of disparages us. He could throw some shade our way by saying these people are angry. And so what I did was I just read the NAACP's letter that Gerald Hankerson wrote. And I explained the, legally, the legal position is that, you know, you're entitled to get recompense when the state wrongfully takes your license and you're earning a living from that license, you know, that's not rocket yeah. science. And people are trying to say that we're we're angry or something. And it's like, no, anything you get less than that is less than a whole loaf. <laughs> you know, that, yeah. that, that that white man at Oscar's bar, he didn't have to take half a loaf. Why should, why should we? Unbelievable. So what's up with you, Sammy? I know you've been out working. What's up with you? Well, I'm just uh, trying to support, you know, try, just for this petition and uh, try to, you know, let people know, you know, they have to sign it because they have a problem with my uh, uh, what's up. Oh, oh okay. usually um, I just send stuff for the community and they sign it, mm -hmm. you know, just multiple people because we have a community. Yeah, uh, um, yeah, together we connect all together and, you know, one email, one, uh, uh, you know, group list, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So they will see what's going on in the community mm -hmm. and they will sign. So I have a problem with my, my other phone. So I have to, it's locked on to my WhatsApp. So I have to reach out to people one by one and people feel, leave far away. So now I'm just focusing on the area I live. So from the community, mm -hmm. you know, plus, you know, try to do my job, you know, here and there. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Um, but th this is, you know, I mean, uh, we have to fight from every angle, you know, so plus I have uh, the new news, you know, so like I said, uh, uh, the sister, the one she have the same facing the same problem. Yeah, she, she got so a, she, she's a friend of mine. And now uh, we want to, you know, let her include the case, you know, so. Oh, OK, good. So this is a woman, guys. Uh, I covered this briefly a few days ago. She fell in love with someone who was imprisoned, married him, and then the LCB would not give them a license. OK, so they went hard on these black folks. Meanwhile, you know, they're busy giving out licenses to this couple uh, who both were engaged in wrongdoing. According to their own lawyer, it, it was uh, William w Widmer, K Khalifa, those guys. And we, I have the documents where they, they went to a final hearing. First off, they got laughed out of a, a bankruptcy court for, for withholding information. Then they withheld information from LCB. And uh, LCB's own internal documents said this, they should never get a license. They will never follow the law. And then they went to final hearing on it. I mentioned this at, at the hearing yesterday and they hated it, the board meeting. So they went to final hearing. Somehow or another, this guy comes out with medical and recreational. So um, I, we're going to take a deposition of their lawyer. OK, and it's going to be interesting because they're going to fight everything I say. You know, <laughs> you know? Uh, it's going to be like this. Yeah. Remember, remember that movie uh, uh, Scanners? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Remember when the heads blew up and shit? That's how it's going to be, dude. <laughs> they're just going to try to fight me for every question I ask her. The bottom line is, look, she is the person who would know how something like that ended up, how they end up getting licenses when they, so they weren't supposed to. 
And, and not only that, if they had a license already, they could have revoked it. If they've been black, they would revoke their shit for that, for lying to the IRS and uh, lying to the, 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 the U.S. trustee were to complain against them in bankruptcy yeah. court. They had, dude, they got four and a half or five million dollars in fraud settlements against them. I'm not exaggerating. I posted all this shit. It's up there. It's out there. And they hate me for exposing all of this. Not my fault. Not having it. You know, fucking green screen looks like a high school project. Look at that shit. Am I there yet? <laughs> you are. Can hear you fine. Okay, terrific, folks. Listen, we're going to talk about equity here. Okay, now I've been around zoning and leasing issues for all of my adult life. Okay, 30 some years I've been a professional zoning manager of land use, both in the civil rights context and uh, in a uh, land use context for wireless carriers. Okay, I know a bit about zoning and, and, and arbitrary and capricious actions. Okay. And what I'm saying is that when you have a license, it gives you a bundle of rights, privileges, and immunities and responsibilities that set you apart from those who don't. There were a number of black pioneers here who I'm becoming friends with all of them now who uh, were scared out of their jobs and their livelihoods by LCB agents posing as real cops when we know now that they're not, okay? We, uh, John Jung, agent John Jung and I established that a year ago on March 5th when I took his deposition uh, live on Facebook actually and he said he would not pull his sidearm because he doesn't have qualified immunity. David Stitt, a former agent, said the same thing. Both these men quit the LCB because of that. All right? That's a fact. Now, back to the rights, privileges, and immunities. I looked around, and I've seen where the ACLU out here, they fought for um, Oscars. They did equity for Oscars restaurant. That's a German immigrant. Lost his license wrongfully to the LCB. And they got it back and lost wages, lost profits, half a million dollars. Okay? Then they also helped out people who uh, lost their driver's licenses, okay? Couldn't pay the fines. Those people did something wrong, just couldn't pay the fine. So ACLU went and helped them, okay? Meanwhile, they are not responding to any of these black folks who were the original pioneers who got pushed out of medical, all right? They can't seem to get representation, although there is one lawyer I found who's talking to them right now. But this is uh, incongruous with stated missions of ACLU and NAACP. NAACP turned a cold shoulder the media won't talk to them either, okay? Uh, your, buddy, your buddy there who does the Cannabis Observer, uh, Greg Foster, he tried to threaten me with, with uh, 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 spam for telling him about the fact that LCB admitted that they're not uh, real cops, that they can't, don't, don't have emergency authority. That's not spam, that's fact. And he shouldn't be using that badge on his page either. It's a folk, fake, fake badge, says police on it. Police of whom? Police of what? <laughs> you know, I used to be an assistant attorney general, but I wasn't a, a law enforcement agent. I couldn't put a gumball light on top of my BMW and go around and pretend like I was a cop. No, just because you work for a law enforcement agency doesn't make you a law enforcement officer. But, but they use that power. And there's been other lawsuits I've been finding out too more recently too. Um, one of the only live shops up there in Everett, they had a, a federal complaint that was just dismissed last month making the same allegation. Uh, Attorney Halverson brought that case, okay? An established professional here brought that case alleging arbitrary and capricious and racist actions on the part of the LCB. And, uh, he did. and then you have the Widmer case. Contrast that with the Widmer case. You know, you guys, it was, it was like a year ago that we were told by Chris Thompson, I had a meeting with him, Brian Corporate, uh, and somebody else, Paula, was there, that it might be to the end of the year before licenses get issued. Well, we're now into the next year, still nothing issued. And meanwhile, LCB, I have a, 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 a fact. There's a fact that uh, with the Widmer case, all right, and that was your case number... I look up the case and uh, shit. Widmer. Your case number. Come on now. Da, 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 da. M-25492. That guy and his wife pled the fifth three times in their uh bankruptcy. Christopher, case. you got 30 seconds. Yeah. And 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 basically you had affidavits from your own attorney who we're gonna take her deposition saying don't give this guy a license. Yet he winds up with uh, all, to both licenses, recreational and medical. And these black guys are out here stuck in the cold. And we're wandering around here like on a plantation or something like looking like, oh, you no know, Master Reynolds, can we please have some, some, some scraps from the table? You know, it's ridiculous. This is just, this is not civil rights. This is something less than that. So equity has to start first and reward those people the same way that Oscars got rewarded. Uh, not rewarded. Thank you. Yeah, watch how he gets rid of me. Thank time. You. Other people, he'd be like, oh, could you just kind of wind uh, it down? Next person we have uh, signed up right. is uh, Sammy Saad. So Sammy missed it, but Mike Asai Cheers. comes in here. Hold on. Here he comes. Right here. He follows me. Hold on. Uh, example that you see today. Hold on. 
Senate Bill 5052 was not a medical cannabis uh, example. He makes a good point, (laughs) but he just, he's, you'll see. He's totally obsequious to them. And doesn't ask for his money back. You know, what what about the, did did he have a shot? Uh, Yes, good morning. Can you see me and hear me? Get your money back. Good morning, board members. Uh, My name is Mike Asai, founder and president of Emerald City Collective Gardens, established in 2010. Uh, we were the second black owned Washington uh, dispensary and first downtown Seattle dispensary. We are Washington state medical pioneers. We were part of the retail uh, example that you see today. Senate bill 5052 was not a medical cannabis merger. I'm sorry, Senate bill 5052 was not a medical cannabis retail merger, but was simply a medical cannabis takeover. Having been licensed with point. Washington state, as I have here today, city of Seattle. He can't quite get his paperwork together. It happens. Doesn't happen to me, but it happens to some people. <laughs> I don't fuck around. Sorry, my my book dropped. My apologies here. That's all right. We we can stipulate you have it in your book if you want to use your time. Look how nice he is. Look how, look how nice Postman is to him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Been one of those people said, oh, yeah. Next person, please. It all comes out in video. You can tell. They can't hide it. Uh, I'm sorry. Am I able to go? I, I lost my... No, what they looking for? A sharecropper agreement? Damn. Okay. About what you got in your book. We're going to assume you got, got the Seattle... Uh, License there as yeah, well. Sorry, We'd yeah. rather be here. Right here and, uh, we we'll conclude, nigga. I got yeah, so simply, time. Put, no, that's uh, not right. That's all right. We were one of the first, and uh, I've been at the task force meetings. Uh, and for me, it's going on six years this July that we've been closed. And I'm highly frustrated, as well as a lot of people like myself. Uh, and that's okay. It's okay to be angry. We need the 39 licenses to go out this year. I understand, as I have stated from the very beginning, uh, they need to be mobile. Uh, even if they're not mobile, we still need these, the process to get started. Uh, it's real frustrating for me. I have lost out on millions, generational wealth. My family has been affected. As long as others, uh, as like me as well, uh, who are in the business, uh, black, brown, uh, and white as well. Uh, but I'm advocating right now for Emerson City Collective Gardens and myself. And so it's just been a very frustrating uh process uh, to have gotten cut out. Uh, as I came down in 2016 to uh, speak at the board meeting, I got stuck in Tacoma traffic. Uh, the board meeting was over. I asked to speak with uh, Beth Lehman, and it was very unprofessional of her when she uh, spoke with me. I had all my documents in the lobby, uh, and it just was, I, I felt like I was just treated like I was a nobody, uh, and being someone that took risks and was a pioneer and being Black in the cannabis business. And so with all that being said, yeah, yes, I have been, myself been highly frustrated at the LCB over the years, uh, but I am looking at the LCB uh, with Ollie Garrett. Uh, she got involved after this whole mess of Senate Bill 5052. So I want to thank her uh, publicly uh, because I know without her, without the LCB, without Governor Inslee, Paula Sardinas, Peter Manning, Aaron Barfield, Representative Petfrew, we would not even be here with the social equity at this moment in time. So I just want to thank them uh, because I know there's been a lot of people that have come out stating they've been doing this and doing that, but I know exactly why we're here today. So I want to thank them. Uh, I'm in support of the LCB. If the LCB is in support of me and others like me uh, being able to obtain a license, uh, it's like I said, it's been extremely frustrating. I'm willing to give the LCB a second chance. I'm not going to hold grudges. Uh, the LCB, from what I've seen, has been great during the task force meetings. They have given a lot of information. And where the LCB has seemed to be moving faster than the task force, and I think the LCB is trying to make the wrong right. Uh, Rick Garza apologized to me uh, in 2020 at the last public LCB meeting, saying that, Mike, I'm sorry, you should have had a license. So I take that to heart. Uh, and as I said, I've been highly upset at the LCB, but as it stands today, I'm not going to let my anger get in the way of, of, of moving forward. And so as I see, the LCB definitely has made changes. Uh, and they're trying to make the right you a little bit of extra time, but you do have 30 seconds left. See, look, they give us some time. See that? If the LCB that? is truly trying to do the right thing, then I'll you write have a letter tonight. Support. If not, then I'll have to back away.